Hello, everyone. We're uh, just waiting a couple of minutes to let some people join. We've got a little, just a little over 70 people out of 100 people registered. So we'll wait just another minute, maybe two minutes, and then get started. So please bear with us just for a second. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Danielson, and uh, I've been hosting these. We're in the second of our webinar series. This is a Jubilee webinar series. And uh, if you're new to us, thanks, thanks for joining. We hope you'll come back. And if you're back for the second time, we hope you'll be joining us as we do this monthly webinar series. And again, the focus of our webinar series is we're really focused on trying to show you attorneys, paralegals, and legal professionals. We want to show you about Jubilee and key integration partners to help you reduce your software costs. We want to help you improve operations, and we want to help you understand how to integrate with best of breed tools. We're all very committed to the idea that the best way to get the leading edge features fastest is to leverage best of breed tools and not necessarily expect everything to come from a vendor. So we wanna really emphasize that, and we're anxious to show you these. We'll be doing these in a series of uh, monthly webinars. Our next one is April 13th. Um, as we always do, we encourage you to send in your chat questions or enter in questions. We'll try to get to some of those questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, any that we don't get to, or frankly, all of our questions, We'll go ahead and assemble all of those questions. We'll get answers from our panel, and then we'll get those answers back out to you. So you'll be getting a recording of this webinar, as well as a uh, listing of all of the questions and the answers to those questions. Hopefully you'll stay with us for the full hour, but you'll get that recording uh, just by registering. So we appreciate you being here, and I'm gonna uh, end with that and move on to our uh, guest speakers, our so-called experts, <laughs> and I don't mean so-called. I'm just making fun. Uh, but Jeff, Jeff, and Trish and Kaylee, uh, uh, Kylie, Kylie. I'm so sorry. I did that last it's month okay. too. I apologize. So Jeff, Jeff, and Kylie are with us. Trish is away today. But what makes Solvent Law interesting is that Solvent Law was a best case user for many years up until recently, and has moved over within the last year to Jubilee. That puts them in a very unique position to be able to say, here's the things I discovered that helped me to do the conversion, helped me to understand some of the features and capabilities of Jubilee. And what we want to focus on today, uh, primarily with Jeff as speaker and Kylie is helping out, we want to focus on the idea of workflows, the whole idea of how do I make my law firm more operationally efficient, save time, save money, and make sure I don't miss anything. So with that, uh, Jeff, I'm gonna hand to you and let you talk through a couple of slides, and Jeff's gonna go ahead and do a demonstration as we go through. And again, as we go along, feel free to enter in chat questions, feel free to enter in questions. Um, Yvonne, who many of you know, and Carlos, who many of you know, Carlos is the lead developer, and Yvonne is the head of customer service and support, and uh, she does all the education. They'll be answering your questions as well as others. So uh, we'll look forward to hearing more from you and hope you enjoy uh, the time we're gonna spend here together. So. All right, thanks Dave. We'll, we'll take, I'm sorry, Jeff, let me uh, run through. So we're gonna, Jeff's wait. gonna look at the exploring workflows part. And then we have some other guests, part of our uh, group of best of breed products. So Lexry is a company many of you know of, and if you don't, I think you'll be interested to hear about them and what they're doing to really innovate the client intake process in, in, in terms of gathering information and critical documents. So that's a separate demo that we'll do at the end, and I'll be introducing Sally and Bennett, who are here on our panel as well. So sorry about that, Jeff. Go ahead now. All right, so the place to really start, I, I think, you know, when you first bring Jubilee over, and it, it has a lot of tools in it, and that's the, the first thing to understand. And probably the the 
where I would start, uh, my recommendation is to build out your workflows because um, you know, before you put cases in and before you start actually finishing cases, you should have your good outline of what's going to happen. So the big question, you know, I have three, three questions here that I ask or ask of myself, ask of anybody else. Why should I care about a workflow? Well, bottom line is you just purchased a brand new tool to make, you know, your practice better, hopefully your life easier. Um, and that's Jubilee. You need to use this very important tool. And, and so the second one is why is automation important? Well, I have really three big things. Number one, if you want to control or standardize the processes from taking a client in the door all the way through discharge, um, you need to make sure you don't miss anything or you lose the file. I mean, that's, those are my, you know, those are the things that will keep you up at night, uh, especially which I hope um, with the economy and everything else going on, I'm hoping that we're all going to be really busy. And with more clients, there are more opportunities to miss something. We don't want that to happen. Um, like I said, we can sleep better at night um, knowing that you know my task lists are done. I didn't miss a deadline. Um, and you can trust that your staff are doing their jobs. Now, I trust my staff, you know, Kylie and Trish, uh, with just about everything in, in my life. But that's because I worked with them for 12 years, and I know how good they are. But when you're building a practice and you start hiring people, it's good to drop new people in and know that, hey, at least the processes are set up. Now, what is a workflow? The definition is a series of activities that are necessary to complete a task. Uh, each step in a workflow has a specific step before it is a specific step after it, with the exception, of course, of the first step, right? Now, flow charts and process maps are useful tools for visualizing the number and order of the steps in a workflow. Um, so that's the standardized definition, but basically think of it from beginning to end. Um, time, you know, the, the, the timeline of a case, and we have that next here. And so for most of us, this is a pretty standard timeline, you know, from the client sets an appointment through retained, preparing the file, filed, uh, 341 set. Um, there's a reason I had that one set out because there's events that we do off of that. Uh, 341 hearing, 341 completed, confirmed, and then you have, you know, some stuff afterward, motion dismisses, motion lift stays, and then discharge. Obviously, there's probably a lot of things in here, like you don't see a garnishment. Um, you could have a garnishment workflow as well that, you know, kind of sits out there, reaffirmation workflows. Um, but for the most part, that should cover just about everything. But that that's the timeline that I talk about here when we do that. Now, workflow elements, uh, the stuff that's in Jubilee. Um, and... So we'll get to building workflows in just a moment, but to understand what Jubilee has, you have to, to first step away and define your workflows. So like that, the, the timeline there, you will want to first of all, go in and create all of your workflow steps that you would take along the way. Uh, it becomes important because you have to name a workflow uh, in Jubilee, and then you have to attach a task list to the workflow and vice versa, but you can't attach a task list to a workflow that's not created. So I did this before. I was trying to create task lists and I had to go back and recreate them. First step, get all your workflow steps and name them. Uh, number one, that's defining them. Now, within Jubilee, you're going to have um, different ways of defining the workflow, different things you can do off of it. And for instance, um, you need to consider which case types. Now, maybe a workflow is for every case type. Maybe it's only for a chapter seven. Maybe it's only for an 11, right? Maybe it's for seven and 13, but not 11. So you can define a workflow task tap, or uh, sorry, task uh, template defined by um, the case type. You can also define it by the debtor type, right? So whether it's consumer, business. Um, within the task templates now, you can assign specific tasks to users. You can have due dates. So for instance, uh, they, they, they use a word called a trigger date. Um, let's say I want a task to jump out 10 days. I don't need to do it right away, but 10 days later. Well, you can set it for 10 days ahead of time. Um, triggers. Now, you can trigger a workflow step off of many different um, events in Jubilee. For instance, you could create a workflow uh, step and or task template off of when that file is open. So every time you open a file or a chapter 11, let's just say, there would be a specific workflow that would jump out or task template that would jump out. Uh, you could do it off a of filed. You could do it off status changed, open, pending, 
uh, that sort of thing. Uh, we uh, way I built mine is all off of the workflow. So we use the status, you know, open pending, um, filed, um, and we have different enclosed. So we have different categories. So like when somebody comes in, they're an open. If they're like, you know, not today, I don't want to file. Let's just, you know, maybe in three months, something I'll, I'll put them in what's called pending, right? Because they're kind of waiting. If they say, you know what, we don't want to file bankruptcy ever. Uh, we just won the lottery, got inheritance, and I close them out. And, and so you, I'm using the statuses to define a group of files, right? But the workflow that we've defined is the retained, filed, 341 set, that whole timeline. So I've created that whole timeline in my workflows. Um, you can add two specific things to these task templates. Number one, a task list or task lists. Um, and you can have multiple of them going out, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, and you can pre-build them. So for instance, you might have a task list that says um, collect on documents, for instance, and then I put a parens with the phone number in it because our standard operating procedure is collect on documents with the phone number. And then the paralegal can go in and, 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 and or the attorney can go in and fill in the, the requisite information. So we're not missing anything. Um, and you can also add a doc request, document request. Now, you might want to set this up off of retained, or you might want to set it up off a 341 set. Now that you know the trustee, um, you could set up certain document requests. I'm not going to go too much into document requests today. That's a subject for a, a future webinar, but it is available to, to run off of there. So uh, as the elements go. Go ahead, Dave. All right. So. This is a process that I have uh, worked out and and Kylie's been with me now for I think about 12, 13 years. And we've been through, oh, probably about four or five data transfers and building out workflows in different systems. So um, it's something that I've, I, I'd like to think I've honed pretty well. Um, but I always say put pencil to paper, forget about the computer, okay? And so sit down, write everything out, from beginning to end, you know, what, like I had that timeline, which we'll see in a second here um, and how that all operates. But, you know, what you wanna ask yourself, what happens at each step? So in my office, what happens when we retain a file? What happens when we file a case? What is the work that needs to be done off of it? And then when should it be done, right? So if you can write this all out, right? And then review it, review it again. And the reason I emphasize writing it out and that sort of thing, because if you're like me and you get impatient and you jump right into it, you build out your entire workflows realizing you didn't build them right. Then you have to scrap it and start over. So uh, not fun to do. So I, I do recommend putting pencil to paper, sitting down and just getting it right from the beginning. And then as you're going through it, you can build them yourself um, with the way I built out Jubilee is I built everything out. Kylie and Trish helped me. Um, I gave them sections and they built them so they could learn how to how they operate as well. It's nice to get your hands dirty, so to speak, to really understand how they operate. So again, pencil to paper, build it out, timelines, uh, make sure you have all your steps, all the tasks that you want. Now it is easy to go back in, uh, relatively easy uh, to change things out. We do that every once in a while. Hey, uh, Kylie might you know send me an email. You know I want this task not at five days but at 20 days. You know. Okay, we just make those adjustments, so it, um, pretty straightforward. Now again, timeline of the case, so we're going back to this. Um, I'm gonna walk through the, I'll, I'm gonna show you or talk through three different um, steps along this path. First one we're gonna just talk about, and then I'll show you the next two. So I, I chose retained. So as I'm, and, and I'm looking at this as, how do I build it out, right? Uh, the pencil to paper type of thing. So at retained, what has to happen? All right, so, well, number one, um, it's already been set up. So my process goes, uh, we set up the file after I retain a file or a client, and you know we get Jubilee set up, we put all the data that we do have in upload documents. Last thing that we will do um, is we set it to um, retain um, the workflow. So then what has to happen? Well, for us, we have to start collecting documents, okay? So the first thing, there will be a task that jumps out, and it goes out to uh, to collection of documents. Um, it says collection and then in parens phone. And so that way when I, Kylie or Trish set up the file, uh, we just type in the phone number. So that way that task, okay, so let's say it goes to Kylie or Trish or whoever's doing the collection on that file. Um, 
Uh, right now they're set up with Lexi, who is another person who helps me, but they go automatically to her task list and they're set out one day in advance because our goal is to call that client the next day. Um, when, then that answers my next question, when does it have to be done? Well, we want it done the next day. Now we have a detailed uh, listing of what's going on in that file. We keep all of our notes in there. Uh, inside the task itself, we drop in um, the documents needed to file. We keep our notes because let's say Lexi's sick for a day and you know Kylie picks them up to, to go through. She can pick up any of those tasks at any moment um, and call on them to make sure we're getting our documents in. Okay, so that's the process you go through is, you know, when I'm writing it out. Now let's take a look at. So Jeff, uh, Jeff yeah. let me, so just, I want to reinforce for everybody. So what you're basically saying is that a, a workflow is a set of tasks, actions that have to happen so that you don't have to remember them. And if Kylie's doing it this week or uh, someone else is doing it next week, the same actions happen. You don't miss anything you make sure everything happens and you don't have to worry about sort of treating every case uniquely. You can really automate and process things quicker, correct? Correct. The so thing I just, that I- I want to throw that in before, because I know you want to get into a detailed example of one, yeah. and I want to make sure that we we uh, conveyed that, uh, that context. But one thing here, Dave, uh, and everybody else is, the one, and I don't know if I coined this phrase or not, or if I heard it from somebody, but I've been saying it for a long time, and Kylie can attest to this, is, we want to let the computer do what the computer is good at. Okay, the computer doesn't make mistakes. If you put it, if the, if the input is good, it's going to be good coming out. I want myself, I want Kylie, I want Trish, and I think every attorney, every paralegal here. The reason we're in consumer bankruptcy is because ultimately, I think we like helping people um, and figuring a solution for them. Um, a computer can't be empathetic. Okay, a computer can't call somebody and say, "Sorry, you're having a bad day." You know, let's do this or take an extra few minutes to listen to you know they had some trouble with their their kids at school and those type of things that's for us to do and so if we let the computer do the work that it can do we can focus on those things that are gonna number one um, keep our clients uh, and number two ultimately make our lives better because we're either making more money in our business or our life is better because we don't have to spend 80 hours a week just trying to make sure things aren't missed so that's the quick thing on that. All right, so when we file a case, now uh, what it's called, the, this workflow will be co is called filed by. Um, the reason I named it that, it's a filed case and it's bifurcation. So I do bifurcation of my attorney fees, I also do third parties, um, and we do paid in fulls for chapter sevens. I also have a filed step for just chapter 13s. So you can see here, um, my it, it, this is my uh, task list for the filed by. Uh, my task list for paid in full and third parties is the same, so that's what we use. And my third, so I have three of them. Chapter 13 is the third one. All right, so I sat down and said, what has to happen upon a file bifurcation? Well, number one, it goes to the paralegal. Now, again, when it says paralegal, paralegal two, paralegal three, you can define in the task list, which we'll see here shortly, you can either define it to a person or a defined person like an attorney or paralegal in Jubilee, or you can just assign it to a defined person like Jeff or Trish or Kylie. Um, but in this one, uh, under file by um, for paralegal. So when we move that workflow step, all three of these task lists jump out immediately. Number one, uh, for the first paralegal, complete the partial filing. So that goes right away to the paralegal who's defined in the case. So the way we operate, you know, Trish takes some files, Kylie takes some files. So that way, when that process step goes out, it doesn't look for Kylie or Trish, it looks for who is the attached paralegal to the case and then sends those tasks. Number one, complete the partial filing, okay? And that's on the trigger date. So that has, so they get that right away so we don't miss it. Um, we send the petition to the client. So they package everything up, email it to the client and then gather information for the trustee. Now we set that out five days after to the paralegal because within about a day or so, the, 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 the trustee is assigned. Now each trustee in Minnesota, that's a little bit different for what they want. So we have that, we know what each trustee wants. So we set that out. Now that would be a good place, again, if we talked about document production, uh, you could actually set that up nicely there. Um, the reason it's not for us at this point, um, just strategic reasons for us, but it will be set up. Um, 
Now, paralegal two, paralegal three might be Kylie, might be Trish specifically. Uh, I believe for us is both two and three are Kylie, um, where she reviews for any kind of proof of claims that we need to be aware of. You know, are there secured debts, or I'm sorry, are there basically priority debts? And if it's an asset case, we want to make sure that they file a proof of claim so they get paid first. Uh, and then again, check for uh, priority debts on the trigger date. Apparently, the other one, debtor education. Is that been complete? That's all 30 days. And check for whatever needed. Uh, in our case, it's a reaffirmation um, in 20 days. So we we def we determine that those are good trigger dates for whoever is assigned them to reach out to the client um, to do that. So why don't we take a look here? Well, Jeff, I know you want to show how to do this, and so I'm going to change control over to you. But real quick while I'm doing that, why not put all of these in one list for one person? Why break it up into oh, three chunks? Good question. So here's the, all right, so let's say a good way of doing it. So when we do, um, the way we have our set up, so Kylie and Trish pick up a file, they finish it, you know, prepare it. They're gonna be the paralegal on that one from beginning to end. So the number one thing for paralegal it goes to the defined paralegal on the case, right? Uh, when you go to the related parties uh, on the matter page, um, it's the, uh, they will be defined. So the Jubilee knows to go, that task list goes to them. The other two task lists, for instance, right now they're set up, you know, see this to Kylie. Now it might be down the road that we want, the, the Kylie might be always doing the number two, but maybe I hire somebody else and I just got to replace paralegal three with somebody else's name. So the, the the task lists are set up and I and I put a three different ones because we may want to change up the workflow a little bit. So instead of um, having to break out, like if I combined two and three, and then a week later we decided to do it differently and a month later we decided to do it differently. Well, now I got to rebuild the thing. So I built it with like jobs going to like to one person and then we can change the person and it's and it works well. Yeah, I know when we were talking about it, Jeff, uh, in in preparation for this, you you referred to it like programming. You build modular programs so you can reuse those modules and rearrange them for other purposes instead of building everything custom and complete. So this is a little bit like that. But let me let me share uh, your screen here, and you can show how that uh, how that plays out when you're oh, using sure. Jubilee. Dave, take 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 away. Sorry. Send it to me again. Ah, oh, sure. I clicked the wrong button. Um, I actually think you are the presenter now. You're still the presenter. Can you see that screen? Um, Sorry, Dave. I hit the wrong button. Right. I apologize to everybody. Well, I'll, t I'll take it back and share it back with you again. This is clearly uh, yours truly's uh, uh, headspace here. So. Let's see. Uh, All right, thank Jeff, you. This should be you now. So hopefully yep. this will now come through. You should see my Jubilee, correct? Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to start with something I said before, which is you have to name all of your workflow steps. So that is located in the firm defined lists off of my profile and firm settings. Okay. So first step you'd always do would be to go in and add a workflow, right? Like I said, retain. And I just left the description the same. I, I don't have a reason yet to do anything there. But as you can see, retained, ready, um, filed by, we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, filed 3PA, Python full, filed 13. Uh, we have, you know, 341 set sevens, 341. So all those steps, again, um, Confirm, post, con, motion to dismiss, motion to uh, lift stay. So that's for those. Now, all right, so we're going to take a look at file by and we're going to open that up. Now, first thing here, you name the template, so it, it's there, uh, file by. Um, I don't have it for a, a case type, don't you know? need that, but they're only for chapter seven, so I limited it to that. Um, debtor types are all, I don't really care at this point for that. Now, here are my lists. Now you can see how I had file by the same thing that we just had on the screen before, on the trigger date, complete partial, um, send petition, 
And if we wanted to edit that, all right, so very important here, to-do list, file by, I just keep naming the same thing so I know what it is. Here's what I was talking about. You can either do a party, which is any of these people here filing a turn, these are all definable, right? So we just define the paralegal and then the attorney. Um, you could have, you know, these are all different ways of defining them. If you wanted a, a user, you know, if I wanted to assign this just to Kylie, I do that, or just to Trish, I do that as well. But we have it set up to paralegal. Now, um, auto set due date, you turn that on. Now here's where you trigger it to go off of a certain point. Do I want this workflow to kick off or this task list to kick off off an of open file? No. Projected filing? No. Status change? No. Because if I did status change, you know, then I have this, right? But that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing workflow step change, filed by. So when I and I go in to do, um, when I you go into the um, petition general, and on the petition in general, um, it is. Uh, where you change your workflow step. But uh, here's where you add your task list, okay? So if I wanted to add a new task in here, and I can type whatever, okay? And then you can set it to be due whatever, okay? That's how that works. So again, I have my filed there, petition, good there. Uh, we're fine there. Again, my second task list, now you see this one is going directly to Kylie. Workflow step, it's all jumping off the same workflow step. And then it's that, okay? Again, the same thing, going right to Kylie, off a of workflow step, debtor education complete, okay? Um, and then check for reaffirmation agreement, okay? So we have those. So that's the uh, workflow step for filed by. Again, a lot here. Uh, this is really kind of to give you kind of an exposure to it um, and that sort of thing. Yeah, I, th I think that's a good point, Jeff, too, is that uh, this is a very involved subject and there's a lot in it, but we're hoping that this whets people's appetite and you want to follow up with uh, with Yvonne or uh, or Nate or Carlos or or even Jeff directly and, and explore more about this. We'll be putting these and other sorts of examples online, but hopefully you see, Jeff, I saw that when you when you assigned that to paralegal, it wasn't specifically Kylie. But if Kylie happened to be the paralegal on that case, then that effectively makes it uh, Kylie's task list, right? Correct. Right. And so, um, let's see, uh, you wanted me to uh, take this back real quick. And let me show then the last one. You wanted to show one other quick example here on the discharge. Yep. Again, same thing. Um, you know, what has to happen, who has to do it, what has to be done on discharge. Um, we do, so to the paralegal, enter client information into 720. We use 720 credit score. Um, many of you know Phil Tyrone, um, and uh, we use him to help our clients rebuild their credit. So of course, the task jumps out to the paralegal so they don't forget to add them in. Because it might not, you know, we get, we get, we put the discharge in and we move it around. We might not have time to right away do some of these things. So that task sits there. And then maybe late in the day, we go through our task list. Oh, I got to enter these four emails. So you do it all at one time. Again, another way to save time. Think of it this way. If I, if I have four discharges come in different times of the day, and I, you know, four different times, I got to open up this, open up that, and open up that, and then dump the stuff in. Whereas if I have it all in one place, and I know I have these four to do, it's boom, 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 and I don't have to reopen stuff. So uh, another time saver. Check for judgments. Um, we do a judgment check at the end. We do remove judgments for our clients um, as an added service. And then we call for the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Uh, we want to review their credit reports. Uh, and that's, you know, that's 90 days after bankruptcy. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, the attorney, who's ever on this one, uh, maybe myself, we do a client courtesy call 45 days after bankruptcy. We found it's always good to check back with your clients. You know, it doesn't take much. Maybe it's a text. But, our, you know, I found that our clients really appreciate it. You know, hey, you're 45 days since your discharge. Hope everything's going well. Um, call me if anything needs needs to be. And, you know, and, oh, hey, my mom needs help. Okay, we'll be happy to help them. So it's another way, another, excuse me, another uh, touching point with your client. So, Jeff, you wanted to show this last one. And uh, just by way of reminder, 
these are we're all familiar with working from tasks and lists and letting the software keep track of these tasks. Where do they show up? They show up inside of Jubilee, and can you uh, demonstrate that for us as well? I know you want to show another workflow here set up. Yeah, give me a, yep, I'll show you this real quick. Uh, discharge, um, named it. Uh, I don't have anything associated groups or anything like that. Just again, this is a general one. Um, for the paralegal, again, it goes to the paralegal who's assigned to the case. Um, enter the 720, send the discharge notice to the client, send a thank you card to the client. Um, check for judgments, call for FCRA, and that's at 90 days out there. Okay, and that's a workflow step there. And of course, my task comes to me, uh, to the attorney um, on the on the case, because you never know when you get another attorney in the office. That way, you don't have to forget about it, and all of a sudden, I'm getting the next attorney's tasks. So we just left it that way. Client courtesy call at 45 um, days. And so again, um, that is how you set those up. Um, task list here. Yeah, and so uh, so when again, you're using no. Jubilee, where do they show up for you? Because this is They're, now now the software is going to feed you a list, whoever you are, as a list of things to do that day. Yep, uh, in your task list. Um, unfortunately, my task list is full of clients' names, so I'm not going to be able to show that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, well, um, uh, awkward question, but I wanted to make sure that everybody understood that this is with, within Jubilee, and essentially, instead of you for every case having to remember to tell everybody what to do anything that's repetitive you're basically building into the system and then on wednesday the 16th of march you're going to log in and see a list of things that you have to do today you didn't have to remember it the software fed it you know basically fed it to you based yep. on set of sets of rules and actions correct correct okay um thanks for that so uh let me take this back and we can we can wrap this up uh, you wanted to summarize then here. So uh, you, I think you wanted uh, Kylie to uh, say a little bit about, you know, from the paralegal's perspective. Kylie, can I hand to you? Yeah. Um, workflows. Uh, I honestly, Jeff asked me what our next webinar should be about, and Trish and I both said workflows. Um, it's the most important thing that as a part of our jobs. Um, by being productive, efficient, that makes your clients happy knowing you're doing everything you can to your best of your ability and in an orderly fashion. Um, from a paralegal perspective, workflows are extremely important um, to a smooth and stress-free bankruptcy operation. Um, okay, maybe not stress-free with dealing with the clients and everything, but um, stress-free from knowing that you're not missing anything um, can keep us out of the doghouse with the clients and even your boss. Um, yeah. You know. <laughs> Kylie, Kylie uh, was this, this was uh, helpful for you then as being new to Jubilee. How long did it take before you dove into workflows and said, you know, now that I understand how the software works, I need to figure out how to make this an automatic routine. How long did that take? Was it right away or did you have to learn the software for a while or oh no it was like 10 seconds like literally you go in and you look at your profile and you're like oh my gosh you can do all of this and you just dug right in yeah. um okay. it's amazing great uh, and back to efficiency it's huge i mean who wants to work more i i don't <laughs> i mean if they're automatically set there for you and all you have to do is just double check your work great um Again, it's just stress-free. You don't have to think about everything. Your mind is at ease. You know, you won't miss anything. They allow you to double check your work. It's ultimately a CYA. Um, again, who wants to get yelled at by your boss that you missed a DEC or um, now the case is dismissed and now you have to refile the whole thing. And um, yeah. you know. so so Jeff, I know you you have some, we're gonna share these slides. Well, first of all, sorry, thank you, Kylie. But we're yep. we're gonna share these slides and so you know you'll be able to individually uh take a look at some of this. But you know, when when Jeff and when I asked Jeff, you know, what are the three big things? He said, you know, look, I'm sure that Kai's gonna say efficiency, peace of mind. Uh, as a as a manager of the firm and an owner of the firm, you cared about cost savings. How do I minimize human effort time? So we'll we'll 
I'll, uh, I don't want to drag you through the math because I can let people work on it later, but effectively, Jeff's put a math equation here to give you a sense of how he, how he views this as a time savings calculation, just to give you a sense that it really does matter. Um, but Jeff, the one that really touched on, the one that really impressed me that I hadn't thought about was protecting your law license and your reputation. Touch on that a little bit as to why that is a big factor here. Right. So for those that you know that that watched the first one and or know me for somehow um, where I came from, I came from one of the higher volume filers in Minnesota for well, we, we I spent 18 and a half years there. Kylie, I think we spent 11 years there together, something like that. Um, and we were filing 150 cases plus a month, right? And so when you have 30 to 40 new clients that I'm filing every month, right? So that's what I was doing. There is no way I can remember everything, right? So the best part about protecting my law license is I can't remember everything and nor should I even try. Um, I have more important things to worry about, namely making sure my clients aren't lying under oath and uh, we got you know the, the right budgets put together, the UST uh, wants this, wants that. So I can't remember everything, but you know what? I have a task list and I can go through that. And if I don't get to everything, you know, towards the end of the day, I can go back through it and say, okay, this, I can do this tomorrow or shoot, I need to stay up and get this one done. Um, you can't watch your staff every day. Now, thank God I have, and I always say the, the two greatest paralegals in the world, um, and I trust them immensely, but you still can't watch them. You know, you can't sit there and making sure they're doing the work. Um, you can through Jubilee, making sure the tasks are going out. You can make sure that they've get they are getting them. You can actually go into their task list and see, are they completing their tasks? Do they have anything outstanding? And so that's wonderful to see. Um, and ultimately here, you know, we need to focus uh, as owners of the firm, as attorneys, um, even as paralegals, you need to focus on, in, on doing the important things, the things that we can do and we can control. Um, and from my perspective, it's, you know, growing the business, being able to, you know, make enough money, to pay the bills and to pay your mortgage and all those other things. But those are the important things like clients um, and dealing with them and making sure, you know, everything is working well. I don't know how much time would be wasted. I can't even begin to fathom that math equation is if we had to, to remember everything for every case without workflows. And that's just the bottom line. They, they make, um, I, I, look, I sleep at night easily because I'm not worried about my law license and reputation uh, with the trustees in the court. So, all right. Uh, so I've, I'll uh, let me summarize then here. Uh, thank you, Jeff, and uh, and thanks, Kylie. Um, we want to make this useful, so we I encourage you again enter any questions you have. We'll follow up with you either at the end of this webinar or in, uh, in our questionnaire uh, that we'll, or questions that we'll send out afterwards. Um, hopefully this is giving you some ideas. I think you'll find that whether you're doing high volume cases or even twice a month, there's lots of benefit because if you're doing two cases a month, you're doing lots of other things. And that even exacerbates the problem of remembering what to do when I get back to filing a case. So I would encourage you to take a look at workflows if you haven't already, if you've done some, there's a lot of power here, and uh, hopefully this is what your appetite to really dig in. Um, I would like to, to move forward though and take the other part of our session. We mentioned that one of, the, one of the missions of this webinar is to introduce you to best of breed integrations. One of the things that Jubilee is committed to doing is to not try to be all things to all people, but integrate to the best of breed products to give you flexibility and to give you the opportunity to take care of all of the different needs that you may have in your firm with integrations that either integrate into the case, can launch. Um, so with that in mind, uh, I wanted to highlight, um, we wanted to highlight Lexria and Lexria has joined us, Sally and Bennett have joined us to go through a little bit of their product and uh, let me see if I can move on here and, uh, and uh, Sorry about that, Bennett. I'm uh, gotten a little crazy with my uh, with my uh, drawing, but I'll make the drawing go away. Uh, so I've known uh, I've known Sally and Bennett for some time. I'll let them uh, I'll let Sally take over here in a second. But essentially, Lexria 
uh, really is an innovative product that is taking a fresh look at bankruptcy intake, the kinds of things that you need to do in order to bring your clients on board efficiently, effectively. Uh, we've all worked with questionnaires, um, and we know that a lot of uh, a lot of information can be streamlined if we can give consumers and easy clients an easy way to enter data. But Lexer has taken a, taken it farther by providing access to a lot of different kinds of asset, credit, payroll, financial data, and then integrating some of these some of this data into the Jubilee case file. So we thought it was important for you to take a look. We had some questions about Lexria in last month's webinar. So with that in mind, uh, we wanted to bring a demo here. So I'm gonna hand this over to Sally and uh, let me hand this to you, Sally, and let you do a demo and introduce yourself. So uh, thank you, Sally and Bennett for joining us here. Sally, you should have controls. There we go. Yes, hopefully you all see that. Let me just pull up my couple of notes here. Um, so nice to be here. Thank you, Dave and Jeff and Kylie. That was so so much information. I feel like I'm still trying to wrap my head around all of it. Um, so I'm Sally and my partner in life and in business is Bennett. Um, we're both entrepreneurs that have worked on a variety of projects and businesses independently over the years, but most recently together on a brand partnership program that took us through Y Combinator, a tech accelerator incubator program. It was through that network we learned about the Lexria team and the work they were doing. So when the opportunity came up for us to get involved with bringing Lexria to the next level, we jumped at the chance. Like Dave, we thought it was a really interesting, innovative product. The first product that the team put out in the world was the Lexria Intake, which integrates into Jubilee, as Dave mentioned. Some of you may even know it and use it. Thank you. I probably had a conversation with you in the last few weeks. It's a robust, structured digital questionnaire that leads the filer through what seems like every possible bankruptcy intake question and includes automated services where possible. That means when it's time to run a credit report, we have an integration directly in the intake with a third party partner that pulls the triple bureau report. Similarly, when it's time to upload pay stubs or financial statements, we make it super simple directly within the intake software for your filers to go grab their pay stubs or financial statements from credit cards, bank accounts, retirement accounts, Venmo, Green, Dot, PayPal, et cetera, all the financial accounts. But we've learned that a full suite intake solution isn't right for everyone, as Dave mentioned. Jubilee has um, integrated with a variety of best of breed products. And so similar to that, we're thinking about what are the other types of solutions that bankruptcy attorneys might want. And today we're happy to share that we're releasing our first of several standalone services. Think of this as something separate from the intake um, and eventually might have some other implications, but we hope that this addresses some of the acute demand related specifically to pay stubs. So our pay stub service is a simple pay stub solution when all you want to do is grab the most recent pay stubs from your filers. It's a great solution when your filer or any of your clients may be struggling to find their pay stubs in hard copy. We heard over and over in the last few months that it's a painful hassle for some attorneys or their teams to chase down pay stubs. So I wanna show you quickly how it works. From our main homepage here, lexria.com, you're gonna to navigate to product and then the pay stub service. And this is just a brief overview of basically what I just shared. And to sign up for our demo purposes today, I'm gonna to be Dennis Thompson. And I'm going to be uh, use a testing um, email address here just to keep our data clean. And he is with Thompson Law. Really simple sign up. There's a brief overview here. What this basically says is your first retrieval with one client is free. So we were big fans of the tribe before you buy. Um, and after that, our, our costing is, is at $21 each per client for unlimited employer connections. And then we have some reduced discounts um, as you increase your usage per month. We charge in arrears at the close of each calendar month. And in order to do that, we do um, take a credit card upfront, but you'll be charged nothing today. So let me just quickly get um, Dennis signed up here. Bear with me, Dennis Thompson. And I'm really just trying to show you how simple it is, um, both on your end and as we move forward on the client side, 
to get started with connecting their employers directly to them. So our confirmation screen gives us a direct referral link for Thompson Law, the unique referral link. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy it. And then I wanna add a new tab here so I can go ahead and get started with a new account. So this is as if you've sent this to one of your clients. And for our demo purposes, you've sent it to Susan Baker. So she gets your referral link, your unique URL. It's customized so she can trust that Thompson Law from Dennis um, wants her to go ahead and connect her employers for the seven last seven months of pay stubs. Again, for testing purposes or for demo purposes, I'm just gonna use a testing account and we're gonna get her signed up. And just like that, really quick, she's in and she can search for her employers. So for the last couple of months, she's been eating at Eat Street, which is a gig economy platform. She's a driver. And it's really simple for her to go ahead and log into her payroll provider. Um, if she's forgotten her password or if she's not sure what her credentials are, she can go ahead and click forgot password. I have, again, just some test, account, some test accounts here so that I can make sure to show you this. Takes just a few minutes to connect to her Eat Street account. And with that completed confirmation, you have her pay stubs effectively. We're gonna zip them all up with her other employer's pay stubs, but this is her first indication that she's connected to her Eat Street account and we can get her pay stubs. I'm gonna add another employer here. Our service covers um, about 75% of the workforce, um, over 300 of the gig platforms. I know that's always a question. 170 million US employees. So um, there's quite a lot in here. Um, Guard Texas, she's a, a patrol officer there, again, part-time. So she's able to go ahead and connect. If she doesn't know her credentials, whatever she got usually during orientation or where she might log into an employer portal, she can go ahead and, for, and hit forgot password and they'll be emailed to her. Um, lastly, she did some part-time work with Plant Shop, an independently owned privately held company in downtown San Antonio, and it is not in here. It's a really small place. So um, she indicates that she can't find her employer, but she also wants to be sure to add it because what's kind of nifty about this, she has no idea who the platform or the payroll provider is. So she's going to hit, I don't know. But what's cool is we're really trying to keep pay stubs all in one place because we we know that you don't want pay stubs in one place because you use Lexria and then pay stubs in another place because she couldn't find her employer. So this tool also enables her to upload any pay stubs that she might have outside the system if she can't find her employer in there. Um, so it's pretty simple. And then um, after she's done and she hits submit, we zip it all into a zip file for you um, with everything labeled the last the last seven months. Those employers that she connected also stay open for the duration of her having connected them. So you will get updated pay stubs as time goes on if she's still working there. So if the filing takes a while or if the overall intake takes a while, depending on your process, you will get sent updated pay stubs. Um, and I think with that, Dave, I have a few other notes, but if you wouldn't mind taking the presentation back and putting up yeah, the last couple real, of slides. Real, real quick question, Sally, to reinforce. Sure. So you said that this is seven months from whenever they do it. So if uh, if someone, if I just, uh, if I just uh, set up a client, brand new client, should I do it then? Uh, should I do it when I file uh, or not when I file, but uh, at some point that, so I guess because it's seven months back from wherever you start, and you keep it open going forward, it really doesn't matter when you sign them up, you're just looking to get the data. And you showed yeah, us some really good yes. obscure ones, but you've got the big guys too, like GE and whomever, so. <laughs> yeah, the big ones are definitely in there. So we wanna make sure you guys are aware there's small guys in those gig platforms too, which we know a lot of people work for. And, it's, and the attorney gets a zip file of PDFs, is that what, it, is that what the delivery is then? That, currently, that's the delivery. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll also be adding in CSV files for for that same amount of or that same data. So you'll have um, the CSV data ready for you. So it's really simple if you want to integrate that into your intake questionnaire or whatever you're using that for. It won't be in that uh, that um, kind of harder to copy paste format and paste stubs. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's coming really quickly. And then we're, we have plans to layer in dashboards and all sorts of fun things so that you have kind of point in time access for everything. And it's not just in your inbox, which, you know, as Jeff pointed out, sometimes that inbox gets to be kind of crazy. And um, yeah, so so we're, we'll get there. We've also obviously started chats with our partners at Jubilee to work on integrating a potential push button service of the pay stub retrieval so that you could send the request to your clients straight from Jubilee. More to come on that. We've just started those conversations. Thanks, Carlos. Um, and in the next month, we'll be releasing a similar standalone service for enabling your clients to retrieve their financial account statements, the bank accounts, credit cards, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so Ben and I are happy to take any questions you might have. And um, in the meantime, um, we'll also follow up with some information, I think in our follow-up email tomorrow um, with a direct link to getting started. And if you sign up in the next 48 hours, we thought it'd be fun before happy hour on Friday, we'll give you another 5% off any of your usage before the end of June. So incentive to sign up. Um, and to the next screen, Dave. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Um, sorry, I don't have control. Um, and there's my direct email address if you want to get in touch for a demo of our intake product. Um, definitely um, um, send us a note there. You can also sign up on our website. With the intake service, similar to the pay stub service, we don't charge anything to get started. We only charge on completed intakes. We're big fans of the try before you buy because we know bringing in any new software is quite an adjustment. So we're here to help with that. Um, and I think I'm I'm good on time. So thank you so much. Uh, well, Sally and, and Bennett, thank you very much. And so we've got a little bit of time left here, uh, admittedly short, but I've got some questions. One of the questions that has come up, uh, and it comes up uh, frequently, but I, I've answered one, but just to make it clear for everyone, we will be sending out a, a link to a recording of the webinar. Uh, I apologize if it seems like a couple people had some, uh, some uh, audio problems. I'm sure that the recording will not have those. So uh, thankfully you'll get that link. And, and we also have some questions uh, and those questions will be answered as well. Uh, one of the questions here, um, uh, is there a deck? Yes, that will be sent out as well. Um, so, uh, Jeff, there's a question here about uh, about uh, trigger notices. How do trigger notices show up in the software? Trigger notices. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, uh, Yvonne, are you on? Because I think you may have joined in with that as well, and I thought it might be uh, uh, it might be helpful for everyone. Uh, the notice manager at the top of the toolbar is is what your answer was, uh, Yvonne. Uh, Yvonne must be on mute. Sorry. Yes, I'm here. Um, yeah, I'm. That's what I was thinking. He was asking where the notice manager was, where to find those notices. Um, and so they are at the top um, of the toolbar where you see all of the, um, where you can find it under Notice Manager. That's where you'll find all of your notices. Um, that's why I was thinking the question was, yeah. well, I, I don't uh, think they can get triggered in task. We'll try to get a comprehensive answer of, of all of those uh, uh, to make sure that we understand the question. Uh, I do have a different one here. Uh, it, this is to Jeff, but I would actually pose this to Jeff or Yvonne or Carlos, uh, frankly myself. But uh, it says, Jeff, I, I, I was curious if your office ever used Time Matters and how it compares to this. This is somebody that has set up a lot of uh, chains for reminders and, and billing in Time Matters, uh, which is similar as a set of automated workflows. He was curious if you've used Time Matters. I, I know that. I know from my experience that Time Matters is one of those uh, is one of those products that that people may be looking to reduce cost and move on from. So replicating uh, strings of events, alarms, tasks, reminders that would be the kind of thing I think that this uh, mimics. Uh, you may not have you used Time Matters before, Jeff? No, I have not. So yeah, it's a Lexus Nexus product. They're actually, okay. a long-standing product. It's pretty. It's pretty frequently used in uh, in small law, uh, but it does tend to be, and I don't mean to be uh, I don't mean to be uh, denigrating to any software, but in my experience, it's a little 
uh, a little bit of, it puts most attorneys in a bit of an IT uh, role that they not are always crazy about being in, and it can be a little expensive to renew. So I think in, in essence, I, I don't know that there's a conversion from time matters to this, but the same concepts apply. Essentially, this is when you get to a certain point in a case, either because the software automatically said it's now in the filed state or you've moved the workflow along manually. This is what you get reminders of things to do, kind of gets reminders of things to do. It could just as easily be a reminder to a finance person to send a bill. So it could be any number of those things. And I hope that uh, kind of addresses uh, kind of addresses your uh, uh, the question for the for the user. Um, says does uh, does Jubilee offer form workflows for Chapter Seven or Thirteen that we can modify as we deem appropriate, um, or do we have to create workflows from scratch? So I think that's a question that's touched on. We've had this a couple of times, Jeff and Carlos, where we've talked about. Are there any sort of templates or tee-ups or how do we get some samples of best practices things that people could use? Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I kind of am. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that, Jeff, as to how that might be shared? Or Carlos, are there any plans to create some templates or sample scenarios that could be used? Yeah, I, I spoke to Carlos and I gave him my permission that if anybody wants, just you know, have have at it if you want my my workflows. Um, you know they're probably going to have to be adjusted for names and other things, but it might be a good starting point. And the, there's no um, you know private data that'll be shared. It's just the the templates and and how they're built. So uh, more than happy to to share them with everybody. Uh, just reach out to Carlos. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, a question here about uh, Lexery in foreign languages. It's a Puerto Rican uh, law firm asking about Spanish. Uh, any thoughts or plans for foreign language uh, in Lexria? Yeah, we have added that to our uh, roadmap, but there's like so much other th stuff that we're getting done now. So um, it's a little bit later in the year for us. But yeah, yeah. it's definitely in our roadmap. Okay. Um, how do, let's see, do the employers know where the pay stubs are going by Lexria? Is there any, uh, is there any awareness back on the, on the, uh, the employer's side, and is that is that uh, if they do, uh, you know, is that important? If they don't, does it matter? I guess is the question. Uh, no, um, the employer should not be aware of this. Um, again, it's it's as if the uh, client themselves are just logging, and that's effectively what they're doing. They're just logging into their um, the payroll provider or their employee portal, whatever it may be, and um, the API is 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 fetching those pay stubs and and storing them in the system. But they're um, so it's treated as the client's data that you're helping correct. them access. That's correct. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I'm I'm a, I'm. Uh, I have two, one, one says, if I understand what Lexery is, I want more of this, <laughs> but somebody else threw in, uh, how do we get our clients to cooperate, <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Let me know too. <laughs> well, so I, I know that you've spent a lot of time, uh, Sally, we'll probably end on this, but uh, maybe from, from anyone's perspective, when you're using, uh, I know Jeff, you like to do your intake meetings in person and have somebody in your office actually use a tool like this to enter client information, to help you make sure that's done. Sally, what's been done in the product itself? If I'm an attorney that wants to just give this to my client and expect them to use it, why should I expect they're gonna use this product? What, what makes it easy for them? You know, that kind of a question. Does that, does that help to sort of paraphrase the, uh, the obviously just question? Yeah, I mean, it, well, first of all, every attorney process is not the same. So we fully respect and understand that um, there is a wide range of how an attorney might want to interact with their client as it relates to client intake. Um, and so the the Lexria intake, if we want to tackle that one first, is a like well-designed, human-centric designed questionnaire so that it walks the client through the process. And we've tried to use elements of like doing some of the harder stuff first so they feel a sense of accomplishment 
Although at the same time, maybe doing the easier stuff first is actually a better sense of accomplishment. So we're kind of tackling the ease of moving through gathering large amounts of data with a beautifully designed mobile um, friendly version of the intake and making some of those automations you know a seamless part of the experience whether rather than a piecemeal experience of like i'm going to fill this out over here and then i also need you to go over here and i also need you to go over here so kind of keeping it in one place we also implemented progress and status bars um, earlier in the year. So you, again, you kind of have that sense of accomplishment at, as you go. Um, and then similarly with the Lexria pay stub service, keeping the client in mind the whole time, like when we kind of came up with this idea of having a referral link, we didn't want this to be a very like structured heavy product. We wanted it to be, you could text your clients and like literally they could do this on their mobile device. Yes, there's passwords. Yes, there's PI, like there's pr um, protected information. So we can't really get around that. And we wanna keep it as secure and protected and private as possible. Um, but we're, we're definitely designing with the client in mind while at the same time trying to address the fact that not every attorney, it's not one size fits all. Um, I don't know, Bennett, if you would add, add anything to that. Well, well if, I, if I may, Sally, I, I would. One of the things, one of the themes that I think Jeff last month was touching on and we'll wrap with this, but one of the things that Jeff was touching on last month was that he enjoys these kinds of seminars and he enjoys specifically working with Jubilee. And I would add Lexria to that list. And the reason he said is that they, you know, you know, tongue in cheek, but really more than half serious, they want to work with me. They they want to make the product better. So I know Jeff and, and uh, Carlos have lots of interactions on fine tuning the product, improving this here tweaking this there and there's always a constant interest. I think uh, I think in the case of Lexria, one of the things that you're seeing here is that Lexria has had a complete client intake for some time, but recognizing that there's a number of attorneys that don't necessarily need the intake, but they really need pay stubs has led them to sort of carve out a separate little module and say, okay, let's bring that to market and see how that works out. So. I think you're going to find with all of these best of breed products, including the people in our current seminar, that what they're interested in is they've got innovative ideas and a passion for making this better and very interested in listening to your thoughts and ideas. Everyone's going to see these questions. Hopefully there'll be some ideas that come from that. There's going to be contact information for you to reach out to. Sally's uh, put hers in here. We'll make sure all of the emails are included. So reach out to us individually reach out to Jubilee or Alexria as a company. And uh, we really hope you got a lot out of this and, uh, and enjoyed it. We're gonna be moving forward in our next webinars. Uh, we're going to be featuring a number of service, a number of different uh, topics, uh, integration with certificate of service, uh, flash docs, which is a really clever document assembly-ish thing. If you're, if you're a BK Pro user, you know flash docs. Having flash docs in Jubilee is a future one. We've had people that wanted us to talk about using chapter, uh, preparing and filing a chapter 11, doing chapter seven non-individuals uh, documents, Jeff alluded to earlier, payment processing. And there's even some innovative tools around cash flow, improving your cash flow by helping you finance uh, some of your caseloads. Not for everyone, but for some people, it means it allows the small guys uh, who are smaller firms to have the power of payments uh, and payment processing or allowing payments to be made uh, that the big guys have. So it really puts medium and small firms on the same financial power level as some of the big guys have. Um, so there's some exciting stuff we're working on. Next one is April 13th, 2022. Uh, we did get a request to move this a little earlier. So we'll be at two o'clock Eastern, one o'clock Central and 11 Pacific. And uh, we welcome your ideas and topics. And again, we hope this has been helpful and we thank you for taking the time. Thanks everyone. Thank you.